thought it might be helpful to give a reflection on the origins of same-sex attraction as part of the Sixth Commandment, which regards human sexuality and sexual integrity. We know that homosexual attraction is not itself sinful. One, it's disordered, yes, so it's not according to the ordering of sexuality as God created it, but it's not sinful. And two, we know that homosexual activity is gravely sinful, in spite of efforts in the church by some to cancel these basic truths of sexuality. You know, there are some clerics who openly would like to rewrite what the catechism says about homosexuality. I'd add myself to that list as well, but the one thing I'd like to rewrite probably isn't the same thing that they have in mind. I'd like to rewrite where it says in paragraph 2357 that, quote, the psychological genesis of homosexuality remains largely unexplained, unquote. I'm not convinced that that's totally accurate. I think it remains largely ignored rather than unexplained. Uh, much of what we'll share today is based on the research of a Dutch psychologist and psychotherapist, Dr. Gerhard van den Aardweg, who wrote a book in the late 90s on homosexuality published by Ignatius Press called The Battle for Normality. At the time he wrote the book, Dr. Van den Aardweg had under his belt more than 30 years of study and therapy experience with more than 300 clients with same-sex orientation. We'll also borrow from another doctor, Dr. Richard Fitzgibbons, Fitzgibbons reflections on the origins of same-sex attraction found in the book The Truth About Homosexuality, also published by Ignatius Press. At the time he wrote his article, Father Dr. Fitzgibbons had 20 years of clinical experience with people who have same-sex attractions. And some of what we'll share today might sound a bit dry and a bit maybe clinical, but I think that can be very helpful in clearing up some of the misinformation and confusion that we've heard over the past few decades. First question regarding the origins of same-sex attraction. Are homosexuals born that way? Well, the answer is, is that there's no scientific evidence that homosexuality is genetic. Homosexuals have normal hormones, normal genes, and normal brains as well. The LGBTQ-friendly British Royal College of Psychiatrics declared in 2014 that homosexuality is not an inborn variant of sexuality. Dr. Mark Lowry, former professor of moral theology at the University of Dallas, noted that if homosexuality were genetic, well, one, it would have died out a long time ago, right? Since homosexuals tend to reproduce at a much lower level than the general population. Two, if it were genetic, then all sets of identical twins where one is homosexual, the other would be too. Why? Because they have identical DNA. But the research says that that's not the case. A researcher, Dr. Neil Whitehead, looked into the question of identical twins and he concluded that if an identical twin has same-sex attraction, the chances of the co-twin having it are about 11% for men and 14% for women. So it's not genetic. Dr. Paul McHugh, professor of psychiatry, psychiatry at John Hopkins University, former psychiatrist-in-chief for John Hopkins Hospital, who studied sexuality for 40 years, said that it's a scientific fact that there is no gay gene. So the idea that homosexuals are born that way has no scientific foundation whatsoever. Actually, it's anti-scientific, but it's one of those myths or lies that has been told enough times that everyone tends to believe it.